And I have a group of students who are supposed to take care of the Wiki Loves Monuments participant survey. So, uh, how did you actually come up with the idea of having this future workshop? Uh, in the, in the run-up of this year's uh, Wiki Loves Monuments, there were some discussions in Switzerland whether uh, the uh, monuments lists were already too saturated, so we had kind of too many or already kind of pictures for almost every object on the, the list from last year. So we thought that even if we can add additional lists this year, uh, we will run into that problem quite soon again. But it would be a pity, of course, to kind of not have any contests anymore in the future. So as we were attending the Glam Wiki conference, uh, Lodewijk and I had a long walk through London and we were kind of coming up with the idea of holding this workshop here and we also focused on a few points um, when we asked ourselves what does this uh, contest actually um, give to the whole community and one unexpected outcome of this Wiki Loves Monuments contest is actually that it reaches a lot of new contributors. So that's something we would like to focus on here, also with a few uh, presentations. I also can show you a short, just one slide that was showed a few days ago. These are the peaks of new um, users on Commons. You can see really uh, huge peaks of Wikilove's Monuments contributors. But the downside here is of course that it is a peak and it doesn't just continue going up. So our focus in the, for the input presentations would be how to attract and retain new contributors. And then for the other two points which we just add, then for the, the group, um, we'll have a, a, a poster session. So we'll have groups actually coming up with new ideas of how to transform the, the contest or how to build upon what we have reached so far. We'll also focus on, on the aspect of cultural heritage and of course we'll focus on how to get great pictures, so having international photo contests. So now I would um, ask Jan from Israel to shortly present their approach to getting new contributors. Uh, they are, is there an interface somewhere? Um, not that I know. Not you yet. can just open one. Okay, we'll make yeah. one. to retain them uh, with uh, like I think like everyone else had mixed success so I'm not sure I'm the right person to like teach about this but uh, I'll share our experiences um, so yeah uh, 
this is uh, by the way this is our brochure for Wikibus monuments um, uh, we uh, what we did before the uh, the actual event the actual competition uh, we tried to raise as much awareness in real life venues and uh, I think this is one of the most important things uh, uh, so one of the things we did for example we talked to the heritage society the actual uh, sort of semi-government institution that uh, manages the monuments uh, and uh, we said to, like yeah we're going to generate uh, thousands of images of monuments but we want your help one of the things we want is for you to organize us uh, one uh, free uh, excursion free tours in different cities different places uh, where there are a lot of monuments and uh, two, uh, as much as uh, as much exposure as possible among the community of uh, like uh, site preservation, etc., which was uh, a community uh, of mostly older people who are working in that sphere who we don't know at all, and they don't know Wikipedia very well. So I think it's a great connection. Uh, so one of the things we did, for example, we went to this uh, photography competition. We got a booth there. Like we have a booth outside for Wikimedia Israel right now. It's a sort of similar idea, and we handed out this brochure. We also handed it out on the tours. And by the way, the tours, uh, it's important to understand that we didn't, it's not like a closed tour. We um, publicize it in a way that's like, uh, you get a free tour in the city, like you get a free tour of Central Tel Aviv, come. In many places, it didn't even say that it was a photography competition, which kind of defeated the point people didn't bring cameras. But uh, in the end, it's actually might not have hurt us so much because they got this brochure, they got the talk by the, like each tour had a Wikimedia. I was in some of the tours and I talked to the people and in the beginning explained what the competition was and that we didn't expect super professional photos, like they could just uh, take their small cameras and take pictures and maybe they wouldn't win but they could uh, contribute to free knowledge, etc. Which uh, some people like this idea and by the way not all of them. Yeah, the better photographers didn't like this idea very much. So if you want more professional pictures, this is not the best idea. But if you just want to, if you want to be in more awareness, which is one of the things we were shooting for, then uh, it's great and they uh, and, and it worked. Uh, so yeah, this is the stuff about the lists. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. This is the map. So uh, this is just part of our map of monuments, and we found that. Uh, there are two criteria for places where people actually go out and take a lot of pictures. Uh, so you see, for example, this place. This is a village, it's called Givat Brenner. A uh, very small village, sort of, uh, it looks like in the middle of a city, but it's actually sort of in the middle of nowhere. So uh, it, it didn't have any pictures, and in fact, nobody, nobody went there. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, if you have uh, like major cities, some major cities, like Ashdod, which uh, very easy to get to, very easy transportation, but only has one monument, obviously it doesn't work either. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, the, so the perfect combination is to have accessible places with a lot of monuments. Uh, but it's, it might sound like it's a difficult thing because, uh, after all, we're not responsible for the actual lists, right? Uh, we have a government body that gives us the lists. Uh, so this is true for many countries participating, but I would suggest that what we did, for example, was uh, like we got a city with one or two monuments, and we told them like, nah, I don't, I don't think this is true. We, one of us drove to that city, took a bus maybe, then went around. Oh, this looks like a monument. Take a picture, send them the picture. Is this a monument? They're like, oh yeah, it is. We just didn't have time to add it to the list, whatever, and then like just get their approval. They send us, yeah, this is approved. This is uh, a monument. Then we can use it. We add it to our list. And it's great. So we didn't have time to do this for most places, but we did for two or three cities. And indeed, those cities got a lot of uh, photos. It doesn't appear on this map, actually, unfortunately. But it got a lot of photos that like, we didn't expect those cities to get anything, because they're like sort of uh, worker towns, not, but not like tourist places like Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem. Um, yeah, next one. Uh, this. Yeah, so this is what I talked about, the uh, tour thing. Uh, so we published it. This uh, is our website. We obviously have a link in all the brochures and all the places we published. We also have uh, an articles in newspaper. We couldn't place ads because that's too expensive. Maybe if you can place an ad in a newspaper in your country, that's awesome. 
but uh, for us it was too expensive, so we just uh, uh, got some media interest and they ran some stories and they had a link to our website. So our website just published the tours. It wasn't, it, it's not entirely clear here on this text. Uh, it's in Hebrew, so I'll tell you in general. It's not clear from here that it's for a photography competition, it's related to Wikipedia. But here it says like free tour to the old city of Safed and the Beit Meiri Museum on Friday, 14 September. Uh, people see this and they're like, wow, free tour, you know, why not? <laughs> so we got each tour on average, uh, got like, I don't know, 40 people, maybe. Some of them in really remote locations got maybe 10 people, but if it's below six, I think we canceled them. But uh, out of the 16 tours we did, I think we only had to cancel one or two, I don't remember exactly. But uh, so most of them did have exposure. And if you're a large country, I guess uh, you should only do tours in the big cities because otherwise it would kind of be difficult. One minute, minute left. All right. Um, yeah, this is not interesting. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Uh, obviously, the biggest uh, power you have is the banner uh, at the top of your Wikipedia or language Wikipedia. So use that and people do visit. Now, uh, I I've talked about attracting new editors, so I'll say a few words about retaining existing editors. Uh, we did find that a lot of people in real life uh, who joined the, these tours, for example, and didn't know anything about Wikipedia and they heard about it, and then they suddenly took interest and they did go to our other events like seminars and workshops that we organized. But what, what I'll say about this is that it's really important to have the infrastructure around Wiki, so not just Wikilove's monuments, but if you don't have any other workshops, any other events in your country, uh, for uh, new users, then uh, it's probably not going to work because these people are going to take interest, then they see that everything is sort of closed and only for professionals and they're going to lose interest very quickly. So we found that what does retain some editors, the few that we were able to retain, uh, was that we had other events that catered to new editors that had nothing to do with Wikilove's monuments, but they came to those events and then they stayed and some of them are still contributing. But as I said, we had mixed success. Okay, um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Are we allowed to take pictures from the group? Or does anybody not want to be on that? Okay. It's okay. Okay, let's go. Oh, sorry. Sandra. Sorry. Funding that is outside of the funding we're getting from the FDC. 
both for Wikidata's modernist and Wikimedia Netherlands as a whole. Um, so combining that, we were looking at possible sources of funding and we came across a fund called the Fund 1880, which sort of focuses on cultural activities in the area surrounding the Hague. And we also looked at the theme of the Dutch National Monument, which is Macht en Pracht, that's power and prestige. Well, the Hague, as, as probably you all know, is sort of the seat of our government. Uh, it's also at the moment the seat of the royal court, and it has been the seat of the princely court in uh, centuries before. So if you're talking about power and prestige, it's in the Hague. So that's how we uh, came together with the project focusing on the Hague, using sort of the appeal of making photographs of monuments and local history to bring in new editors. So it's a very simple formula, and I'm afraid I can't tell you how the results are and how successful we are, because this is going to run in September and October, so we're now in, in the preparation phases. But we're already uh, learning some lessons. Um, one of them, which you all know, is the Vicky Loves Monuments formula is very appealing. Uh, not just to the public, but we're finding it's also uh, appealing for, for funders. This Fonds 1818, they had never heard of us before, and we just sent them a letter saying, hey, we want to do this, and uh, they sent a letter back, oh, sounds nice, give some money. So, so that's useful to know. Um, one of the more problematic lessons we learn is that if you organize a Vicky Loves Monuments type activity while Vicky Loves Monuments proper is actually running, uh, you're going to run short of volunteers because people are already uh, full up, so that in the beginning was a bit, a bit problematic. So we have staff at the office, but sort of our philosophy is staff only does things if volunteers don't want to do them, or can't do them for whatever reason. So in the beginning, staff put a little more time in, but now some volunteers have more time. But that was uh, a little bit of a bottleneck at one point. And also what we're finding is that if you want to involve the local uh, the people, the local history and the local heritage groups, which are mainly also volunteer organizations, uh, that requires a little more effort than, uh, than we thought. These people obviously are also busy, and since Wicked Loss Monuments coincides with the Dutch National Monument Week, they also have a, they were <coughs> actually busy. So we should have started involving them earlier than we did in this case, so that's also a, so a lesson we're learning. But on the other hand, we, the response we are getting from people, such as the organization of, uh, of local tour guides in The Hague, also volunteers, they really like this, uh, this concept. We are also getting some good feedback from, from venues and from, we have a good cooperation with the National Archive about providing information for the uh, editor form. Also, uh, something that uh, points should perhaps have pointed that out before. We want to make the focus of the editor and the editor training a little wider than just the monuments. We say anyone who's interested in, in the history or the heritage of this city will be welcome. I mean, there's obviously a link. So we hope to attract people who otherwise perhaps would not have sort of become involved with Wikimedia's monuments, and obviously we hope to retain them for the Wikimedia movement. And uh, well, I should say same time next year, and then uh, I'll tell you how it all worked out. Yes. Yeah. 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 That will serve as an inspiration also for many of you. And now Eduardo from Chile. Okay. We can turn that up because yeah. We'll My name is Eduardo Testart. I'm president of Wikimedia Chile. Last year we organized for the first time the Wikilove's Monuments contest for our country. And the outcome, basically in basic numbers, were about 4,083 pictures, which lowered down thanks to commons people to 1,081. And also uh, about 330 uh, uploaders, okay? Basically, what I'm trying to focus is on observations. We, I, uh, while we're working in the end of the contest up here, so maybe we can learn some lessons from them and 
That's why I, we, I thought, in the chapter we thought, that we could do some things to take advantage of these lessons that seem a little bit negative, okay? <clears throat> Basically, um, there are two things I think are important. One is to outcome aggressiveness of, of commons administrators, because commons, I don't know if there are any commons administrators besides Benoit. We talk about this in Milan. What happens is like images are uh, aggressively analyzed by common, uh, commons administrators, and they are easily erased. And that affects, I believe it affects the participation of people because a person that uploads an image for the first time and then enters to see if that works out and the image got erased too quickly, with being able, maybe there is a chance to fix that, maybe there is a chance to fill an OTRS or maybe there's a chance to save it, of course affects the person that is participating in a contest. I know this is a really hard issue, but maybe it's good to have a group of volunteers devoting in analyzing if the images are correctly tagged, if an OTRS can be done, and also people within the community of commons could lower or tone down a little bit the aggressiveness during the contest, and maybe analyzing the images better afterwards, you know? After we tried to save the, most, the biggest amount we could. That's one, one thing. And the second thing is, I think there is a lack of connection between uh, images uploaded, this is a photo, photograph contest, and there's a lot of people eager to take photographs and, and upload them to Commons and participate in that particular project. But there is a lack of vinculation between Commons and Wikipedia sometimes. Where the observation comes from, I personally, personally needed to uh, you know, up, uh, make the images that were winners, aggregate them or add them to the articles. No one else did that job. Also create the articles for monuments that didn't exist the articles for. So this seemed like a problem, but the idea was to see an opportunity about this, and this is, yeah, even though I don't have the, I don't have data, data about retention, I just checked the 10 winners, they are not uh, editing anymore. The idea is to stimulate and create a bridge. These are not bulletproof ideas, so I can't answer any questions, but these are open, open ideas to make this connection, okay? So, um, the first, I, I, first idea is to create a prize for creating articles in Wikipedia about the monuments, you know? So we start creating like a second layer of the contest. Another idea uh, we have is a parallel contest creating like ID tags, I don't know, every moment, every, every monument has like a identification board where it has a picture, a name and everything and that takes work to do also. So another contest would be good, maybe the article exists but you can add this uh, identification. And other idea could be picking the 50 best pictures that were finalists and making a contest who can integrate them to the articles in a better way, you know, or make them present so it's visible and you create these breaches. I know there might be a lot of criticism with these ideas, but it's the only things we have thought so far on creating a bridge between two worlds that seem to separate because I don't know how many people it's uploading pictures and then it's involving in editing Wikipedia and making the both projects richer. So that's okay. Oh, another sm small thing about the ending list of monuments. Chile has available a list of about 800 monuments, which is kind of low. I think we have feel like 600 about that. So the same issue uh, uh, that with Switzerland is going to happen. So we're going to experiment in a pilot project, very vague. We don't have defined limits for this, it's called or something like Wiki Voyage Contest. The idea is to use the machinery of Wikilove's monuments and take it to a different perspective, maybe going taking advantage of summer vacations. People might take pictures of monuments or parks, national parks, identif uh, identifiable national parks, to create a new contest that might take advantage of all the system created so far so we don't lose that, you know, to create a like a, a connection between what we're doing now and what we can do in the future. So we're going to experiment with this project in the summer and we'll, we'll let you know about the, the results about that afterwards. And uh, yep, that would be it. Okay, thank you very thank much. You very much. <laughs> so thanks for pitching already some of the ideas. Now we're going to move on to the creative part uh, involving everybody to an idea fair based on posters, so we'll split the group in smaller groups of three to five people, 
people who kind of come up with an idea, or maybe some of you already have ideas. I know that Jon is sitting here. He's the international coordinator of Wiki Loves Public Art, which is also inspired by Wiki Loves Monuments. Um, what I would like you to have on the posters in the end is the title of the approach, the approach in a nutshell, and it's like one sentence, just shortly, precisely, concisely describing what it is about, a list of objectives. And then why is it fun? Why is it fun for existing Wikipedians, but especially also why is it fun for new contributors? And then you can add any other useful information or, or uh, illustration to enhance your poster. In the end, we'll come back here and put up the posters, and you will all present your poster, and in the end, we'll quickly rate the posters and see um, who is going to take these ideas forward. So now, um, how are we going to build the groups or to yeah, get the groups? Uh, if somebody already has a very clear idea which he wants to kind of put onto a post, it's maybe the best idea just that you get up and pitch it shortly and then you just take a poster here and live with your group. Uh, but it's also possible just to create random groups and think think about uh, new approaches to Wikilove's monuments or how to build upon this experience we had so far. Okay. <laughs> so there was a Wikilove's Earth approach, huh? Do you want to take the poster? Yeah. It's from the Ukraine. So, and by the way, it's possible to go outside on these tables and there's room, I think, M106, which was free before. Uh, it's also, I think it's, I'm not sure whether it's related or not, but there are desks, so you can actually put the post there and write on the desk. Uh, Well, you can join the group. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me get you. Are you working or are you not? Are you working? Are you working?
Okay, everybody, it's presentation time. Yeah, I know you're late, but uh, you, can, you can present uh, at last. They want to learn Atlas like the traditional offline Atlas scenario, like you know, an Atlas sort of factory and like it's uh So Wiki Labs Discovery, who is presenting? Wiki Labs Discovery. Yeah, get up and pitch quickly your project. You can do it from here. From here? Yeah. Just pitch quickly what it is about and yeah, go. So, me and my group have talked about Wiki Labs Discovery. Me and these great guys have thought about Wiki Labs Discovery. So, discover how much you love, mo you love monuments. That is to say that participants are given clues to discover monuments, and they have to understand what monument they have to discover, or what detail they have to discover about that monument. Then take a picture, upload it on Wikipedia, on Wikimedia or on foundations, and then uh, the best photos to be, have to be, will have to be published in important magazines about travels, maybe, uh, I think about National Geographic, maybe it's too important. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought about prices too, for best unexpected discoveries along the way, and uh, tips to, to join that place or uh, to visit that place. Uh, is it fun because, uh, because of the challenge? Because you get to know more about monuments in a different way? Uh, because you know more <laughs> about cities too? Uh, you need to think about clues to solve the problem. And then pictures can be used uh, both in Wikipedia and on Wikivoyage. And finally, because we thought about it. <laughs> 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 In the end, we'll be asked to rate the different posters. Next one, Wiki loves everything. <laughs> I, I, I've seen the other the, the other posters, and I think we have a uh, very very much in common. Um, that clearly uh, we can't stop only with monuments. We need to go further with other things that are important for our heritage, for our culture, and for our countries. Uh, especially for those countries that are out, outside the, the more developed world, which has less monuments but had much more culture that has not been uploaded everywhere else. For example, traditional dances, endangered languages, uh, monuments that are not official for the country. So how can we expand this uh, contest and how we can include also other things, for example, videos or audios about for dances, music, or other things, natural sites, which is something that appears in Wiggle of Earth, and also uh, not only uh, focused on the certified monuments, as we see, as we saw in the case of Israel, uh, most of the people say, okay, this is a monument. Yeah, yeah, it is, uh, it's somewhere else in the, the record, uh, so we don't have to trust all with the government, but also we can think about unofficial monuments or select what is what we think is a monument or important for our country. We are thinking maybe we can choose 100 things for our countries, including monuments, dances, world heritage, natural sites for each country, and then make it uh, available for competition. So creating our own list. Also, question opens, the open questions that we have for, in general, for Wiki of Monuments. It's about one thing about the professionalism. In the first 
round of the country of each country probably a lot of things people are saying yeah I'm going to take part of this content which sounds kind of fun and they see after one month that the pictures are really cool but they're really professional so next year I don't I don't have a chance to win because I'm not a professional I don't have a professional equipment so how we can make uh, those um, amateur uh, participants stay in the second year and we're thinking for example one option could be uh, having a prize or a category for those uploaded with a mobile pic with a mobile phone maybe it's not the best picture about a monument but it's easier to go all, to all the monuments that we don't have and at the end even with the, the best smartphone uh, you're having the same tool that a professional so that equalizes a, a bit more of, between all the participants also uh, how to participate with schools for example taking the uh, class to a monument, taking pictures and make the kids upload, upload it. That's an idea we have in Argentina, but we haven't implemented yet. Yet, and also how to link Wikipedia and especially Wikipedia, which is uh, probably has less rules. It's easier to edit and more related to the content itself. Okay, that's a lot of. A lot of <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. I mean, why, why not? Wikipedia with Wikicom as well to have a special prize for the picture which is which you upload a picture and you create an article for a case like that. Okay, a lot of options. Now Wiki loves Everything. Uh, Everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I think these guys were. Uh, so, is it our <laughs> <laughs> so is it kind of similar? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Asterisk means everything. Yeah, you can so, just uh, say what the differences are. And then we uh, differences. Uh, we were thinking that we people are interested in architecture, plant life, animal life, people, nature. They are interested in something. So we cover everything. And actually, Wikimedia is covering everything. So at the end of the day, they will find a topic that they are interested in. So we offer a kind of uh, integrated uh, content uh, solution so that every three, four months we focus on one topic, which means uh, we organize not only, let's say, uh, photo contests, but also uh, thematic workshops. We bring experts, for example, let's say, if we are talking about uh, plant life, we, we bring a biologist on the city, he explains a bit about, uh, I don't know, Animals typical from the region, and uh, we can uh, create an edit editathon about uh, the subject and explain photographic technology. It's not the same because it's not the same photograph in, uh, let's say, architecture or animals so, or macro photography for plant life. So, uh, for this, we also need, I mean, it's important that we train our photographers so that the quality of the pictures gets better. And then, uh, yeah, we think that with this, um, we will approach more people. Of course, it is more work. But at the end of the day, this is what we want, and we want it to come to have a lot of these uh, pictures. And if I get it right, it's always one theme at, at a time, and not like everything at once. Uh, it, it's important that people see that there is uh, the, the topic they are interested in is coming somewhere, but yeah, we focus on uh, one topic every yeah. three, four months. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This one is the same as. Yes, we can Yeah. And I think we must have a service. Eaten. Wikimedia will create or already have two interesting experiences. The first one was a chestnut piano competition. It was a competition when the best uh, performers were uploaded to Wikimedia Com with our ad, Wikimedia Ukraine. This was the first competition, but I hope not last. It was, a, no, it was not our competition, it was a collaboration with the master class organization, but uh, it was the first time uh, my star class uh, or this uh, Wikimedia Ukraine organized this competition for uh, pianist amateurs. Mostly, but some of them play piano better as professionals. And uh, I hope next and next year it will be better and better, and more and more uh, videos we shall upload to um, Wikimedia Commons. 
and uh, the other armor project uh, was named as uh, classical music in Ukraine, in Ukraine. Yeah. This means that, uh, uh, you know, most of us, I think, love opera, opera or other vocal music. But it is very um, beautiful if uh, this vocal music sounds in your native language. In this, case, in this case, you would feel it uh, more deep, more expressive. So in Ukraine, there are some beautiful Ukrainian translations of operas by Mozart, for example, Verdi and other composers. And we start the project uh, which uh, named uh, uh, Classical Music in Ukrainian that uh, aimed to popularize this music in uh, Ukrainian translations. I think it would be beautiful uh, to listen for Verdi, for example, for Giuseppe Verdi in other languages also, for example in Polish or in... Okay, I think we got this idea. I think you should have done a poster on that because you actually have another poster. Hey, he just saw a poster. And you want to you want to show a film in the end? I have a idea. So the next one is if your list of monuments are complete. Okay, if it is in this direction, if we got in this direction first. Ah, you would have the requested image content. Okay, okay. Thank you. It's complete. Uh, okay. Do you want to start here then? Wiki or IC? Yeah, it's, uh, we gave it the title Wiki Rick. It's catchy and short and everything. Okay. So uh, the, the idea of the direction is like, you, you know, you have Wikileaks monuments and there's talk about the old countries like the Netherlands and Austria who've been participating a long time that uh, we've already like, uh, I don't know, had too much of Wikileaks monuments and all that's branch out of public art. And then there's Wikileaks Earth, and I mean all of that is really awesome. Uh, but for example, for a chapter like us, which is like a mid-sized chapter, and many other mid-sized chapters, we just don't have enough resources to run all those competitions. Uh, so how to combine them all into one, which is uh, uh, which achieves similar results uh, and has the same uh, like uh, benefit for the movement? Uh, so our idea was the requested image competition, which is you take the list of articles and it could be generated automatically because uh, many Wikipedias have like a geolocation for where the requested image is needed. So you make a list of those and uh, also for people, uh, and then you get people to take pictures of that. And uh, one of the things you can like advertise is like uh, what we're drawing here is image not available if you remember. Mm -hmm. the, you, know, you go into an English language Wikipedia article. I don't know who of you remember that thing. It was like a portrait and it said like image not available. And then they decided to scrap it because it looked too ugly. So yeah, so uh, you could sort of advertise it like this. Like how many times has it been like, no image in your article? Now is your chance to take a picture. And uh, yeah, obviously it's fun for Wikimedians because you actually, you have a checklist of the real article that you need stuff for. And then uh, you, you make checks on that, you, like, you go somewhere, okay, that, I, I took a picture of that, check. And then uh, also for, uh, if you're interested in a certain uh, field, then you go and you see like, oh, suddenly there are pictures for all the stuff in my field, that, that is amazing. Uh, and for non-Wikipedians, it's uh, it's the same as WLM really, it's just the same events, the same prizes, the same atmosphere. You can organize it in pretty much the same way. Okay, thank you very much. If you have all the requested <laughs> pictures, then you can uh, then we cannot monuments will not end. Uh, because you can go into details. Uh, for instance, there are many very big uh, monuments like castles or big churches. And um, then you can um, give prizes for the best uh, single statue in the cathedral and so on. Um, or use uh, other photo techniques, uh, maybe video or uh, three-dimensional uh, pics of it and then if you have all these details you can better write articles and uh, so 
we say you can follow up with Love Monuments in September, in October with a smaller or a longer, bigger uh, article editing competition. The smaller ones are for newbies, so that they can learn to edit in the uh, Wikipedia and in other uh, projects of Wikimedia, for instance in WikiVoyage. Maybe it will be easier to write an article in WikiVoyage first uh, than in Wikipedia. Uh, yes, and then we go over to Wikilove uh, well, everything. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So, uh, who was the group with the ideas for building bridges between commons? <laughs> well, I did not have better classes. So. <laughs> oh, well, this is like. We sat down, we have a little group. Uh, I was just trying to see expanding or giving a second turn on this idea of building a bridge between two worlds. Uh, we started with this idea of uh, as it was to link articles and we start seeing like pros and cons, positive things, negative things that might, have, that might come out from this. So it's good to use the images and reach the articles, cross the barrier between the projects. All this in the frame of you know linking featured articles uh, or use of migrate articles if the feature exists but the article doesn't. We foresee some calls that <coughs> it might produce a word editions. In, for example, if some user might want this image and this other user another one, they start reverting themselves. There might be ways of you know uh, avoiding that, but uh, and another cost measuring what the outcome result is probably or maybe because this could happen. But also you can focus on kilobytes or how an article, how strong it is, long it is, or something like that. And then create an article based on a picture, which is maybe coming from, yeah. from this, and create a few an info box for the monuments, which are the things we, I, was, I was talking about before, and that was it. Basically, there are, uh, we have like big numbers. We collect a lot of picture and everything, but Honestly, what is the percentage that will really go to Wikipedia in our It happens, we, gotta, we never know. know. Yeah. Okay, but thank you very much. Now we have two poses left. One is, it's actually, it's both about already existing uh, content. Wiki loves public art. Who is going to pitch that one? Um, so yeah, we have to take place, yeah. place this May this year, the first time, we were five countries, two pilots. Um, the idea is to, well, we'll use the Wikilos Monument basic setup, uh, use the same technology behind it with the Shagot food uh, and all of that. So we can use the same tools and structures that are already existing, uh, saving a lot of time for the that want to join. And we can use the same, you know, mobile phone apps and stuff like that, which is quite efficient, I think. Um, a big benefit of that is already in place now. Um, the idea is that you're focusing on public artworks, both outside, uh, like in parks, and you know, um, and but also on uh, public art you can find in museums, the PD uh, art. There's two folks that you can like, and the countries that have limited freedom of panorama. They can focus on having the artworks in the museums, uh, and the ones that have more uh, free freedom of panorama can use uh, the public uh, creating list for artworks, sculptures. Um, and uh, we think this was very important to do because there are so much artworks both getting destroyed, there are stolen, large quantity of public art for different reasons, and uh, often like sh yeah, disappearing because the municipality doesn't take care of them. They're not protected like the uh, monuments are often in most countries. Um, so we were <laughs> time is running out. One shoot it before it dies. It's another one we were thinking like different slogans every little group here. Um, there is a deadline uh, for public art. And um, with, when we had this focus on museums, we have a very easy way of uh, using these photos of ours as an integrated part of it. So it's quite easy to organize and quite efficient uh, to contact the, the museums beforehand and have the entrance and all that. Um, and um, yeah, we're building it with the with this. Uh, so it's uh, a way of contacting and initiating cooperation with, uh, in this case, with artists. There are no national databases nearly. 
So you contact municipalities, you have a reason to contact them and explain about open source, explain about the importance of you know releasing their material, the open data. So just been a really fun side effect of it that a lot of them are discussing it now on the municipal level and releasing more data in other different fields. So. Okay, thank you very much. And the last poster is a very special one because they told me that I've actually organized a movie. <laughs> Thank you. 
A very last thing, those who are interested in continuing with this idea, like bringing them for forward, just leave your name somewhere on the poster or maybe on, on, some, on some sheet. And it would be also great to have a, a leading person maybe to kind of follow up on this. There will be another, um, there will be a panel on Wikilove's monuments also on Sunday. I don't know, maybe some of these ideas or about these future questions will also be brought up there. I don't know whether you can talk more about it. Yeah, it's after lunch on Sunday. And we will have also people presenting from different countries their best uh, practices and what makes their contest successful. So maybe some of these ideas can show up during the panel. So you're invited. Stay <laughs> welcome. This one? <laughs> That's to write the poster. You, you put it on the poster. Would you like to like more? That time. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we've got one. Oh. <laughs> it's our big one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 